In today's episode, I'm going to share with you a movie my family and I watched together and how it just filled our hearts with joy and gratitude. And what facing my fears and going on a swing in Cuenca, Ecuador did for me and the surprising gift it offered. This is Jessica Stories. It's an uplifting podcast where I share real life stories from my life with lifelong lessons in the hopes to encourage you to look at your life and to see what lessons you might be missing and what lessons you can learn today and tomorrow and forever. I'm also going to be sharing how to gain emotional clarity in your life through small steps that you can implement day after day that can help you gain more clarity, live more vibrantly with less pain and suffering. Doesn't that sound amazing? (laughs) I think it does. And it really is amazing because it works and I've experienced it in my life. I'm also going to be telling you how it's going to roll on Wednesdays. I'll be sharing a story with you that will help you have something to think about over the week. And then on a Saturday, I'm going to share a short, concise clarity class in hopes to help you implement the things that we are sharing on Jessica Stories. Sit back, relax, or maybe you're on a run or in the car, wherever you are. I hope that you enjoy this podcast. Hello, welcome. I wanted to share with you a few things that have really added light to my life this last week. And as I share them, I want you to reflect on what you did last week and if you took the time to do some things that lift you, that elevate you towards being that better version of yourself. Because friends, you get to choose what things come into your life. And most likely there's not people in your life thinking like, what can I do to really help you feel light? Like, no, you got to do that yourself, honey bun. So one of them is our family watched the movie Wonder. Lucas, my 10 year old, read the book and he loved it. He wasn't interested in reading it initially. And I told him, I really think you're going to like this. And seriously took me about six weeks to convince him. He read it and really, really enjoyed the message and the characters, the people, the messages, and just um, the different values that he learned from watching, I mean, from reading it. So we watched it. It was so lovely. It has Owen Wilson in it and Julia Roberts. Oh, my golly. My mother's heart just was stretched and torn and it grew. It was it was a lovely experience. It really... Um, it really opened my heart up and reminded me of truths and of who I want to be. Another thing that has been added light to my life is walking to the Twin Falls Temple. So I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And when I lived in Denver, it took about 50 minutes to drive to a temple. But now I can walk to one. I can walk to one in 25 minutes. <sighs> is so fantastic. It's not open right now for me to go in and do temple work, but I can be in the grounds. I can just see it. And if I'm driving in town, often I will drive back to the house a different way just so I can pass the temple because it is such a novelty to be able to see the temple most days if I want to. That just hasn't gotten old for me yet. (laughs) And I hope it doesn't. (laughs) Another thing that added light to my life last week is we went skiing and snowboarding at Soldier Mountain. And first off, it was really hard for me because it was a ton and ton of powder. So I think I think there was like mm, 20 inches of fresh powder. I don't have much experience in skiing in powder. And that meant that every time I fell, it felt impossible to get back up. And there was a moment we'd gone up to the top lift and I just went down and everyone, I fell down, stuck in just so much powdery snow. I cannot get back up. It was absolutely painful and frustrating. But friends, I was so proud of myself. I like honored the feelings. I dealt with the problems I was facing and it didn't ruin my day. I am so grateful. After that, then my snowboard broke and I had to get it fixed. So I just went and rented another one because I was in such good spirits. And I'm really grateful for that because if you remember my episode a few weeks ago, my snowboarding experience was not so great. There were lots of angry, frustrated feelings. (laughs) That experience really lifted me up and proved to me that we can change and evolve and become better. Today's story 
I'm going to be telling you about swinging on a swing in Cuenca, in Cuenca, Ecuador. So in Ecuador, I don't know if this is common throughout South America, but in Ecuador, there are lots of swings that swing you off like the side of a cliff or a hill over into something. Um, we first saw this in Banos. There was so many of them there, maybe up to 10 different ones. We went on two of them. And then in Cuenca, we saw some as well. They might be in other areas of Ecuador, but those are the areas that we experienced these swings. And basically, when we were in Banos, they would put you on this seat, which had like a car seat belt attached to it, and they'd strap you in and then send you out, and that's how you stayed in. And it was about the same in Cuenca. In Cuenca, that was our last area we visited when we were in Ecuador. It was definitely the most westernized part of Ecuador that we had visited. And there were a lot of people from America that had decided to go to Cuenca and to retire and live there, as it's super affordable and it's really, really beautiful. There's lots of fun things to do. There's lots of outdoor activity opportunities. The weather's very pleasant. It's like an eternal spring. And yeah, it also has more of the Western comforts that people desire. We were there for about four days and we actually hadn't planned on going to Cuenca. But when we're on the coast, we just one day we're like, let's go to Cuenca tomorrow for our last three days. And we did it. We made it happen. And we drove down there. And we are so glad we made that last minute switch. When we were down there, and I think it was our second to last day, we went to this adventure park. <laughs> the adventure park in Cuenca is quite different than an adventure park, say, in America. Um, it was on the side of the mountain, covered in tropical trees. And it was definitely... It had been raining that day, so it had just finished raining as we were walking up there, and I didn't have the best shoe situation on. I think I was wearing socks in sandals. Yeah, really fancy. We go up and pay our $3, I think it was, and then climbed a bajillion steps up the side of this kind of cliffside to the top where this adventure park was. The first thing we got to do, when I say we, I mean the boys and Ben, because I did not do it, because it did not look safe to me, was walk along this rope. There was this rope, probably, I don't know, 25 feet in the air, and they just clip you into a harness. No, it wasn't a rope. It was, it was kind of like a walkway of um, wooden boards that went from one side to the other. It was probably 50 feet long, maybe. But there were boards missing and it was crazy rickety and you didn't have anything to hold on to. You were holding on to the the rope that was attached to you and whatever it was attached to above. And you walked across. It looked so sketch, friends. Lucas and Jack, they just did it. Lucas actually started dancing and wiggling his hips. Ben did it and he said it was legit concerning and super sketchy. I decided that was super foolish and I would not participate in trying it. Neither did I have any sort of desire to do it. Another part of the adventure park was this Tarzan swing. So they had this, again, it was like a belt, literally a belt that holds up your jeans. They tie it around your chest and that belt is attached to a rope. And then they just throw you and they swing you out. And it's a Tarzan swing, apparently. And literally, <laughs> it squeezes their chest and it looks like it's just going to slip up their shoulders and they're going to fall and die. That's how it looked. Um, Lucas thought it was really fun. <laughs> everyone was really sore the next day and I'm pretty sure it was from that specific swing. Again, when I say everyone, this does not include me because I did not have a desire to do it. But then we get to this swing. This swing looked different to the swings we had seen in Banos. This swing had, it was kind of a more, um, it was kind of this seat you were sitting on in some sort of like metal apparatus. And then it hooked onto this other thing that took you high. And then they kind of press a lever and it swings you out. 
and Jack did it and he thought it was amazing. Lucas did it. He thought it was amazing. Ben did not do it because he was not feeling too well that day. I think it's because his parasites were really acting up and after the other swinging events, um, he did not feel that that would be good for him or his digestive system. <laughs> and they were like, are you going to do it, mom? Are you going to do it? And I said, no, I'm not doing it. And then they were like, oh, are you scared? And I said, yeah, of course I'm scared. I don't have a desire to do this. But then there was this twinge of Jessica. Are you not doing it because you really don't want to? Or are you not doing it because it scares you? This one did seem a lot more safe than the other two. I felt that it passed some of my safety precautions. And I realized... I was choosing not to do it because that was the comfortable thing and that it might be fun and it might not be, but until I try it, I'm not going to really know because the last time I did one was like three weeks previous. It was a little bit of time ago. So finally I said, okay, I'm going to do it. But then someone else was doing it before me and I had to wait. Ah, when you have to wait, when you decide to do something, it's the most annoying thing because it's like the men and women in your head are like, don't do it. It's a waste of time. You're fine. And they're like, no, you can do it. And it's just frustrating. But I ended up getting strapped in this metal contraption seat thing and getting pulled up on this other thing. And then the lever went and then boom, out I went. And let me tell you, I screamed and I think everyone heard me in a hundred feet radius and um I did not like it no I didn't like it it was not pleasant I didn't feel like I was gonna die but I did not feel thrill at all (laughs) I probably felt alarmed the entire time but here is what happens next is after is where I got my gift my gift. I felt so energetic and excited after I had done it. The actual swing, I did not enjoy. I did not think like, oh, I want to do this like a hundred times. That was incredible. No, I didn't. But after, it elevated my state of being And I had so much joy after that I did it. And I wanted to share that with you because sometimes we are avoiding something because that something is uncomfortable. And yes, it might be uncomfortable. And we think, oh, because it's uncomfortable and I don't like it. And it's not like I have to do it. Like, why do it? Totally fine. But I encourage you to maybe do it every now and then because the gift might come after you have done it. It still might be uncomfortable. It still might not be something you choose to do. But after, it might totally change your state of being. For me, it changed my state of being from feeling really alarmed and withdrawn. Like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. To feeling elated and thrilled. And that was magnificent, friends. That change of being helped change the rest of my day and send it in a direction that was really elevated and uplifting. We can sometimes experience this change of being when we do things that we don't want to do, when we do things that don't seem really great at the time or that really stretches and are uncomfortable. I want you to think about in the Book of Mormon, in Ether, we learn about the Jaredites And they are to go across the ocean, across the ocean to the Americas in a barge. It's like a submarine, right? God tells them how to build it. It's a submarine underwater, basically. For Like it takes them like a year or maybe longer. I don't remember. It takes them a long time. And imagine if you would be those people like, "Mm, I just don't think that's going to be good for me. Uh, I don't want to do that. That's not, uh, I don't think I'll like that. Mm, No, I don't think I'm going to like it. And if they chose not to do it, think of all the lessons and opportunities of growth and, and examples of how God is performing miracles for them that they would have missed out on. If they just, because it was uncomfortable, because, uh, no, I don't really want to do it. They would have missed out on that. And yes, I bet being in a flipping barge for a really, really long time, stuck with lots of people, is going to be really stinky. It's probably going to be loud, probably going to be really seasick. 
and it's probably just not an overall amazing experience. But when they got to the other side, can you imagine the feeling that they had of relief, of gratitude for being kept alive that they got to the other side? Sometimes we have to put ourselves in situations that stretches, that are uncomfortable and embrace opportunities that maybe we would not choose for ourselves because the process that opportunity provides us will deepen our gratitude, will deepen our joy and enrich our life with experience because now we have more tangible experience that we can pull from. I want to share a quote This quote comes from, it comes from, here we go. This is, We Will Prove Them Here With by David A. Bednar. He said, I pray that we as individuals and families are learning the valuable lessons that only challenging experiences can teach us. I think that's fantastic. Challenging experiences will teach you things that you will not find anywhere else. And maybe you're rolling your eyes and thinking, you just went on a swing at the high, at the adventure place in Cuenca. No big deal. But it did feel like a big deal to me in that moment. Just like um, last year when I gave the episode about canyoning in, in the out, no, no, in Banos, that's where we were, and how that was really hard, rappelling next to a giant waterfall. I did not like it. But that experience has taught me things that I wouldn't have gained had I not been stretched, had I not been faced with a situation or an opportunity that I didn't want to participate in, that I wanted to click my fingers and magically be somewhere else. If we really could click our fingers and make things go away, I think we'd be so much more entitled, we'd be far weaker human beings, would be less empathetic, less compassionate, and we'd be so much more shallow when we have to stick at things and work through difficult circumstances. We give ourselves the opportunity to draw upon the atonement of Jesus Christ, to see how he will lift us, how he will guide us, how he will give us the strength we need when we feel like we have no strength left. Without those opportunities, we probably would never come to know him. And we definitely would not come to know what we're capable to do with the power of Christ in our lives. Now, most of the world right now has been heavily impacted by COVID-19, by this disease and there are a lot of things that have come out of this this part of our life that we don't want to do that are uncomfortable that are frustrating that um basically provide us opportunities to grow or not and i want to share a quote this is from a talk called moving forward by russell m nelson he said meanwhile the work of the lord is steadily steadily moving forward Amid social distancing, face masks, and Zoom meetings, we have learned to do some things differently and some things even more efficiently. Unusual times can bring unusual rewards. I believe that when we have opportunities to do things that force us to step away from that which is comfortable, that which is known, that which is um, maybe our first choice, It provides us with an opportunity to grow, to expand, to become more than we would have become had we maintained the same trajectory we were on. Look back at your life for just a moment. (laughs) That's really dramatic. Look back at your life. (laughs) But think about the times that you have grown the most as a human, whether it was, it could be in a physical goal, like my brother is really into running. Um, and has he has grown in the last year, has become a really good runner. Um, it could be in, oh, I'm learning the piano, or I'm learning an instrument, and you've grown in that, or learning a language, whatever it is. Or it could be dealing with emotions, or getting up early in the morning, developing new habits, looking your life, and see the times that you've been able to progress the most. 
And nearly always it's in times where pressure was felt, right? If you're going to become a better runner, you're going to have to flip and get up and run. And then you're going to have to get yourself to either run longer or run faster or do both. And both of those things are uncomfortable. Just like if you want to get up early in the morning, what do you have to do? You have to flip and get up early in the morning, which means that you either are tired or you have to go to bed earlier. And it forces you to change what is comfortable, what is your default setting. And that is painful sometimes. That is something that we resist, that we avoid. And yet in doing those things, we grow. We become more refined. I think that is fantastic. And so when I look back on going on this swing that both my boys did and they were just as happy as anything and they would have done it like five more times and I did my one and it was scary and I was alarmed and I didn't love it. You know what? I did it and I was blessed with a gift and that gift was a change of state of being. I encourage you to challenge yourself to do the things that maybe you're normally saying no to. Now, most of the world right now has been heavily impacted by COVID-19, by this disease. And there are a lot of things that have come out of this this part of our life that we don't want to do, that are uncomfortable, that are frustrating, that um, basically provide us opportunities to grow or not. And I want to share a quote. This is from a talk called Moving Forward by Russell M. Nelson. He said, Meanwhile, the work of the Lord is steadily steadily moving forward. Amid social distancing, face masks, and Zoom meetings, we have learned to do some things differently and some things even more efficiently. Unusual times can bring unusual rewards. I believe that when we have opportunities to do things that forces to step away from that which is comfortable, that which is known, that which is um, maybe our first choice. It provides us with an opportunity to grow, to expand, to become more than we would have become had we maintained the same trajectory we were on. Look back at your life for just a moment. (laughs) That's really dramatic. Look back at your life. (laughs) But think about the times that you have grown the most as a human, whether it was, it could be in a physical goal, like my brother is really into running um, and has, he has grown in the last year, has become a really good runner. Um, it could be in, oh, I'm learning the piano or I'm learning an instrument and you've grown in that or learning a language, whatever it is, or it could be dealing with emotions or getting up early in the morning, developing new habits, look in your life and see the times that you've been able to progress the most. And nearly always it's in times where pressure was felt, right? If you're going to become a better runner, you're going to have to flip and get up and run. And then you're going to have to get yourself to either run longer or run faster or do both. And both of those things are uncomfortable. Just like if you want to get up early in the morning, what do you have to do? You have to flip and get up early in the morning, which means that you either are tired or you have to go to bed earlier. And it forces you to change what is comfortable, what is your default setting. And that is painful sometimes. That is something that we resist, that we avoid. And yet in doing those things, we grow, we become more refined. I think that is fantastic. And so when I look back on going on this swing that both my boys did and they were just as happy as anything and they would have done it like five more times and I did my one and it was scary and I was alarmed and I didn't love it. You know what? I did it and I was blessed with a gift and that gift was a change of state of being. I encourage you to challenge yourself to do the things that maybe you're normally saying no to. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you will join me again this Saturday as we have our quick and short clarity class. If you, in the meantime, need some resources to help you gain emotional clarity, head over to my website. It's jessica-carney.com. On there, you will find two resources that will be incredibly helpful. The next step strategy questions and the feeling sheets. 
these two resources will help you identify your feelings, process them, and create thoughts that can help you move towards a more desirable feeling and find your next step. Have fun, take care, see you next time.